Excellency, Dr. Hussain Abdel Rahman Al Rand, Assistant Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health and Prevention's Health Centers and Clinics, and Chair of the Conference Host Organizing Committee, Dr. Anna Stavdal, President of Wonka World, Dr. Donald Lee, Immediate Past President of Wonka World, Dr. Wadia Mohammed Sharif, President of the Emirates Family Medicine Society and Co-Chair of the Conference Host Organizing Committee, Professor Chris Van Wiel and Professor Mohammed Farghali, Co-Chairs of the Conference International Scientific Committee and members of the Wonka Executive Committee and the Wonka World Council, Presidents and Regional Representatives of Wonka Regions and the Young Doctors Movements, members of the conference planning, organizing, and international and regional scientific committees, distinguished faculty members, guest speakers, and conference participants. My name is Nahil Nassar, and it is a great honor to be your master of ceremony for the closing ceremony of the Wonka World Conference 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, the realization of Wonka 2021 was only possible through the support and collaboration of the conference participants, partners, and supporters. The networking, engagement, and collaboration amongst the conference participants has been immense, and such was your positive and highly enthusiastic feedback. You were all present over the past few days to represent your countries and your peers in discussions, debates, and to share your knowledge with your family medicine colleagues from all around the world. As the Wonka World Virtual Conference 2021 draws to a close, we wish you all every success with achieving your goals. Ladies and gentlemen, the closing ceremony today will include closing remarks by Dr. Wadia Mohammed Sharif, President of the Emirates Family Medicine Society and Co-Chair of the Conference Host Organizing Committee. Closing remarks by Professor Chris Van Wiel, Co-Chair of the Conference International Scientific Committee. A speech and presentation on Wonka Roadmap 2023 by Dr. Anna Stavdal, President of Wonka World. And we will then follow by a series of video presentations on upcoming Wonka conferences, starting with the Wonka 2023 World Conference in Sydney, followed by the Wonka World Rural Health Conference 2022. And last but not least, the 27th Wonka Europe Conference 2022. I would like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Wadia El Sharif, to make her closing remarks. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, Salam Alaikum. I'm honored and delighted to deliver the closing remarks on the last day of the Wonka 2021 virtual conference on behalf of the UAE team. This was a highly quality educational experience filled with expert lectures, the latest research, and the active participation by family physicians from all over the world. I would like to thank the Wonka World Council members for your vote of confidence in the UAE team. We had most certainly hoped to extend to all of you a warm welcome to all attendees here in the UAE. But as said earlier, we will continue to pursue this dream and trust we will have your support. I would like to thank Dr. Hussein Rand for his unlimited support, Dr. Donald Lee and Dr. Harris for their guidance throughout, as well as our distinguished faculty guest speakers and all the members of various committees for your enthusiastic and dedicated work. My sincere appreciation also goes to the WHO representatives, partner organizations and the sponsors, as well as to the organizing team who have put their heart and soul in making this conference happen under unparalleled circumstances. 
I'm extremely pleased that the Wonka virtual conference was well attended by various stakeholders, ranging from government officials, policymakers, to family medicine practitioners, experts, and young doctors. We had rich panel discussions filled with insightful content, and I trust that the participants have also benefited from the networking opportunities throughout. Our young doctors have been at the center stage of many of the educational and networking activities. And my message to them, keep going. You are the future of our Wonka family and you can always count on our support and guidance. Equally important, at the highest decision-making levels, I trust that our policymakers have obtained important takeaways from our discussions and are even more better equipped to introduce the necessary policies or strategies to enhance national public health agendas around the world for the betterment of all societies. Last but not the least, I would like to extend our best wishes to Dr. Anna Stafdel, the upcoming Wonka president in her new role. Finally, I would like to wish you all to stay safe and healthy until we meet again all in person. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wadia, for your kind speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I invite Professor Chris Van Wiel to make his speech. Thank you very much. On behalf of the scientific, International Scientific Committee, I would like to conclude this conference with a couple of closing remarks. And I would like to start with lots of thank yous. Thank you first to you, delegates, for your contributions, but also for your patience, your flexibility in coping with all the hazards of the rescheduling due to the pandemic we were facing. A great thank you for the professional team of Meeting Minds for their leadership, for their tenacity in coping with all the hazards of organizing and reorganizing and rescheduling the conference from an in-person to an online from 2020 to 2021. Thank you to my co-chair, uh, Professor Feigerly, and in him to all the members of the International uh, uh, Committee and a very special one to Dr. Bomil Seifert, Wonka's most seasoned conference organizer. In our program for Abu Dhabi 2020, we had the aim of presenting important global perspectives of primary care, global perspectives of Wonka, and seeking contributions to share experience, knowledge with them, from around the world and involving young as much as old family doctors. And it's reassuring that we've been able to retain that even under the circumstances of meeting virtually. With the COVID-19 pandemic, we've learned the lessons, the lessons of the value of virtual meetings, the value of the ability online and from distance to inform each other of new knowledge, new technology. And primary care family medicine is all about new knowledge and new technology. But as we have experienced time and again, and also during this meeting, information of new technology, new knowledges for family medicine, only the starting point. It's not an aim in itself. It is how this new may add to what we already know. And key questions is how this contributes, not in general, but to the health of the people and the communities we serve. And here we need studies, we need stories, we need reflections. We need to understand how this adds to the approaches we are familiar with. It is one of the strengths of the conference, I think, that we've been able to maintain this in a virtual format, this more reflective approach, sharing experiences, exchange skills. 
And that justifies a great compliment to all of us. But inevitably, the circumstances of not meeting in person must have had a negative impact on the meeting. We lost the opportunity of reflection, of meeting in person on the intellectual process that is so central to primary care. And there were a number of global issues since our last meeting in Seoul in 2018 important global issues that require in-depth discussion and reflection. Let me share three of you, them with you. Um, the Astana Declaration, for a start. The opportunity created in 2019 with the restating of the central role of primary care and health systems, restating it after the Almaty Declaration of 1978, restating it after the World Health Report of 2008. But still, such declaration has to be implemented, has to be implemented in what is more of most often health policy that is heavily biased towards hospitals, towards diseases, towards technology, towards subspecialties. And that in itself is difficult enough. It has been frustrated by the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID pandemic, again, something we addressed in this conference, where primary care plays, played, and will continue to play an important role in caring for individuals, caring for communities, in prevention, in vaccination. But I think it's an educated guess that around the world, policymakers have ignored the role of primary care more often in favor of the hospital, the specialist. And that in itself is an important issue to address in the coming years, but it's even more complex probably. There is the danger that with policymakers so focused now on dealing with a pandemic will completely ignore the issues of the Astana Declaration. And that's something we should not let happen. And I guess the third very acute issue is of climate change, discussed in this conference, discussed in the conference in Scotland, in Glasgow, in recent weeks, the overarching issue on the health of our future. And with primary care focusing on global health that is so important to understand that global health depends to a large extent of the health of the globe. Three very burning issues that we've touched upon but definitely not brought to an end. Very ambitious issues. Yes, issues with an uncertain outcome, certainly issues you may see as too big to address quite possible but keep in mind primary care always dealt with ambitious issues with an uncertain outcome and most often we came out better than before therefore we've touched upon this we've not finished it it's the agenda for the future see this as an inspiration now we move from Abu Dhabi to Sydney and see it as something we will readdress when we hopefully meet in person in 2023 in Sydney. And in the meantime, let's enjoy the leadership of Wonka to lead us through this very important agenda. Thank you very much for your contribution. See you all in Sydney in 2023. Thank you very much, Professor Van Wiel, for your kind remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome Dr. Anna Stavdal, President of Wonka World, to make her speech on the Wonka 2023 Roadmap.
What interesting and energizing days these have been. My thanks go out to the organizers of our first virtual Wonka World Conference. A big job, well done. At this closing session, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my vision for our global network. This photo is from my home turf, with ski tracks leading on to the far horizon. Quo Vadis Wonka. At the awards ceremony yesterday, we presented the new executive board of Wonka, a great team. We will be sharing the responsibility for running our organization during this next biennium. Where do we find ourselves now and how will the current global situation influence the plans for our work? That's Dr. Richard Norton, Lancet renowned editor-in-chief and expert in global health. He sums it up quite well. Strong primary care is an absolute prerequisite to defend us against this pandemic and future pandemics. It is the first line of defense. I hear that as a call to us, to Wonka. The ongoing pandemic affords us a golden moment to make the case for primary care and family medicine. Health for all is our vision and here is how I see our mission. Now, more than ever, what the world needs is high quality primary care, a close to home healthcare hub that functions in seamless collaboration with social care and public health services, as well as with hospitals. That requires a strong multi-professional team with a qualified family doctor on board. When I stood for election as president in 2018, I emphasized three essential goals. Build identity, increase visibility, exert influence. It's time now to explore the concrete actions Wonka can take to help achieve those goals. Here's my plan. Building identity. This means building our organization. So much is built and there's still so much potential. We need to examine our structure as well as our content. First, structure. In a diverse and complex organization such as ours, it's easy to lose the overview of who we are. Many Wonka members are not even aware that they are Wonka members. Many of those who are aware are not familiar with the organization structure. We are the more than 500,000 members of 132 member organizations in 110 countries, grouped into seven regions. There are some 34 members in the academic membership group which consists of academic departments of family medicine and 10 organizations in collaborative relations. The majority of our members arrive via their national colleges, but over 800 individual general practitioners and family physicians have chosen to join Wonka in their own right by direct membership. The regions all have their own councils. All the regional presidents are re represented on the World Executive Board, along with three members at large and the young doctor representative, the president-elect and the president. The professional content is developed in working parties and special interest groups and is shared with members. This supports their professional development locally. It also prepares them to give informed input to the leadership when policies, priorities and political direction are being decided. The pandemic has functioned as a magnifying glass. Long existing geopolitical inequities, as well as inequities within health and social care, have become far more visible. Disparities based on gender, age, ethnicity, economics, language, culture and geography are being played out in plain sight. 
how can we make sure that these same patterns of inequity are not reinforced by our organization or actually woven subtly into its very structure? If there are to be helpful and constructive dialogues about equity must be balanced. Awareness of possible inequities does help enrich our exchanges about organizational development, but we have to be careful not to put too much of our focus on our differences. Polarization never furthers the aim of a collective effort. As we build our Wonka organization, we should be aware of something that is triggered in people as the complexity of their human-made systems increases. Almost instinctively, they begin to design and build their own turf, often elaborately complex parallel systems, as if that could help them tackle new challenges and even some of the old ones. We we'll need to recognize that tendency if and when it crops up and be prepared how best to respond to it. Now to content. Content and what we share. For the last 25 years, a key commitment of mine has been and still is to recognize and affirm our core values and to fully grasp the dimensions of our specialty. A strong sense of identity requires us to know both who we are and what we share, what unites us. Our values are our guiding principles. At the same time, practices and standards vary in different contexts, particularly when it comes to local needs and what the public demands. We can recognize our differences better when we're aware of our common ground and be better prepared to meet the challenges we face as societal trends change. Shifts in societal trends are always reflected in the health systems and first and foremost in primary care. Knowledge of our common ground also enables our collective efforts to be effective, such as when we develop training programs, define research agendas, agree on advocacy actions, plan activities that are well dimensioned. I've had the privilege of being actively engaged in phase after phase of brainstorming and consensus processes focused on our core values and the nature of our specialty on the Norwegian, Nordic and recently on the European level. By three posters, this slide describes one such integrated brainstorming process that has gone on for the last 20 years in my own Nordic region. We are about to finalize a regional brainstorming process in Europe as we speak. Its outcome, a consensus-based statement. Similar things have been done elsewhere. Here, the Canadian version. And take a look at this paper, describing how core values have been included in a family medicine training program in Sudan. The authors describe in positive, its positive impact in detail. So, massive efforts have been invested in Wonka during its nearly half century long life. I'm looking forward during the next two years to participating in far-reaching exchanges about our core values and the definition of family medicine. For a definition to impact identity, members need to have a stake in it. That sense of ownership that comes from having won it for themselves. Let's consider how to improve the dialogues between the parts of our community, vertically, between the global, regional and local level, then horizontally, with and among working parties and special interest groups. I'm especially looking forward to including young doctors in these dialogues. But remember, 
Understanding our field is not something we do once and then we've got it. It's an ongoing process, life long. Now over to visibility. If we want to set the agenda, we must be visible. To that end, we will work to strengthen the brand Wonka. Success at branding, according to marketing research, depends on sending out consistent visual and verbal messages. Our members are our primary source of visibility. A sense of shared ownership of the definition of a specialty throughout networks enables them to present Wonka with clarity. It empowers each and every one of us to help shape the agenda for small and large scale policy dialogues in all of our varied contexts. Our messaging then is consistent and recognizable. During the last 18 months, we've seen somewhat positive, although paradoxical consequence of the pandemic for our branding. We've been sort of forced to enter the digital world and also been lucky enough to have access to it. Now that we've almost figured out how to operate these remarkable virtual tools, we can use them to make our dialogues more inclusive, increase participation in ongoing pro processes and become more visible to each other and to the outer world, wherever on the globe we find ourselves. The vast family medicine research base is another rich resource for our messaging. Research results and evidence help us understand and explain the hows and whys of family medicine's impact on health outcomes. The time has come to conduct a global analysis of primary care and family medicine during the pandemic. At the initiative of the Working Party on Research, we've begun to outline a joint research venture. Among the interesting questions to explore are what pivotal factors were operating in countries where a primary care-based health system managed to tackle the pandemic well? And what might account for that not being the case in countries where that didn't succeed? Another aspect which should be included in a global analysis is to develop a systematic approach to collect data on the impact of the pandemic in terms of deaths of primary care providers. A WHO report on deaths on healthcare workers issued last September doesn't explicitly compare primary care with other settings, but the assumptions underpinning their estimates and recommendations would support a theory that many of the deaths have been in primary care settings, especially in low and middle income countries. The current data are inadequate for us to really understand the magnitude of the problem, which is likely to be substantially more than has been reported. Data sets from individual countries would provide a basis for further exploration. Wonka has the infrastructure to help us collect such data. So Wonka research projects increase our visibility. Wonka's training and practice accreditation programs are under rapid development. Our education and quality improvement activities serve our communities. They also highlight the legitimacy of our professional voice, particularly when educational plans are made and standards for quality are set. That, in turn, helps increase Wonka's visibility and, potentially, our influence. Obviously, for Wonka to function, we need funding. Membership dues are one of our main sources of income. So are conference fees, but those have nearly dried up now due to lockdowns and the lack of available meeting places. There's so much we want to do. So we must look for supplementary sources of income. 
To attract funding and receive grants, we must increase our visibility. And we need our infrastructure. The Wonka Executive Board now has the possibility of sharing messages, materials and instruments with regions via the regional presidents and with working parties and special interest groups via the chairs. Wonka also added a full-time communications officer to its secretariat. She has already provided us with materials we can use, such as the Wonka map slides I showed you at the start. This year's Family Doctor Day was a big success. It showcased how a centrally designed communication strategy can function when utilized in local campaigns. In short, increased visibility through branding Wonka. And there is more to come. Visibility is necessary for us to exert influence. And exerting influence allows us to increase our impact. Here, advocacy is the tool. What elements of advocacy help heighten our impact? First, we must build trust. Far too often, people accuse medical doctors of, of um, exploiting the professional advice we give as a shield to hide behind while we're grabbing at higher status, more privileged working conditions, and of course, more money. Through Wonka, meanwhile, it becomes clear what we aim for is professional development, providing evidence based on experience and advice based on best practice, committed to achieving the best outcomes for our patients. The better we recognize and develop that way of understanding our role, the more we can refine our professional voice. That's how we gain trust. And that is how we safeguard the legitimacy of our advice. The prices charged for our services are negotiable. Our values and professional standards are not. Second, we need allies. Our most important ally is the public, our patients. Our patients are voters, the ones who elect and re-elect our politicians. The importance of what primary caregivers provide is less visible to individual patients than is the work of specialists, our secondary care colleagues. What impacts Health outcomes, however, is not which specific technical procedure is performed, rather it is what family medicine provides, the continuity of care over time. This is how I explained it in a TEDx talk in, in 2019. And here is how my Nordic colleagues and I explained it in a film we made a few weeks ago. General practice, family medicine, is a medical specialty with a defined curriculum and its own research tradition. It is based on a set of values and a specific approach to problems. Our core values and principles are presented in the following. Remember also that continuity of care requires continuity of available, healthy healthcare professionals. We are obligated to take good care of ourselves, physically and emotionally, and to seek help when we need it. Doctors are people. Other primary care professionals, as well as our colleagues in secondary care, are also important allies. It's essential that we nurture our relationships to them and to their professional organizations. We need each other. We must work tirelessly to cultivate common ground with all our colleagues within the entire healthcare system. Third, words matter. 
We need to develop policy languages or maybe dialects that speak directly to our listeners. We must train ourselves and each other to translate evidence and experience into terms that are widely accessible, while also being tailored to suit specific contexts. Case in point, I had the opportunity during the, this last year to serve on the WHO Europe's Pandemic Commission, which focused on rethinking policy priorities. In a group filled with finance experts and former leaders and heads of state, I was the only practicing healthcare worker. I saw more clearly than ever that it's crucial for us, family doctors, to be able to spell out our concepts and ideas. We must have convincing lines of argument, thought through and ready, so that we can reach out beyond the narrow field of healthcare. This should include how to talk about money. Which leads me to my fourth point. We must identify and reach out to our target groups. During the last de decade, Wonka's leaders have forged strong relationships with the representatives of WHO at the regional as well as global level and will continue to maintain and develop them. We'll also tend our relationships to our other important external stakeholders, such as the OECD, yet another voice in the global health policy dialogue. Which brings me to a request I'd like to make of you. Early next year, the OECD will launch the biggest survey ever on the role of primary caregivers play in chronic care management. Both care providers and recipients are asked to take part. I urge you to take the time to respond to that survey. A high response level will provide us with invaluable data to use in crafting policy dialogues in the years to come. I also want us to broaden our scope, going beyond our stakeholders. If we're to have real impact on health policies, we'll need to engage in dialogues with people from other sectors, such as finance and education. WHO and OECD are examples of top-heavy global institutions. My picture of Wonka is different. It's at the community level that our advocacy can have the greatest impact. That's where we live and work. That's where our people seek and receive the services they need. That's where we train our future colleagues and other primary care professionals. I'm convinced that's where we can increase our impact most. If, that is, we show people who we are and what we stand for if we can be visible and speak with clarity, becoming role models for communicating about evidence and experience in ways that speak directly to the people of local contexts. That's the challenge and we are rising to meet it. A tweet came a few days ago that summed up the essence of advocacy. Proposing the action points is absolutely essential. In other words, don't just know what you want, but also figure out how to make it happen. Then do it. Here are some examples. To bridge the gap between health and social care, build primary care teams. To integrate primary care and public health, run co-trainings for the personnel. Train in primary care settings. If the long-term aim is for 50% of the health workforce to be trained in and for primary care, commit to having 30% by 2030. Make sure that there are budget items earmarked specifically for primary care. And not least, family medicine on the undergraduate curricula at all medical schools. In closing, let me repeat our common goal. High quality primary care, a close to home healthcare hub that functions in seamless collaboration 
with social care and public health services, as well as with hospitals. That requires a strong, multi-professional team with a qualified family doctor on board. I think this message can be used as a headline for all of us when we are building our identity, increasing our visibility in order to exert influence. The message can be elaborated on and adjusted to the different contexts we as family doctors are operating in. There we are. Those are the main elements of my plan for how we, together as Wonka, can contribute to making that vision a reality. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to following our path together, all of us. I hope I can see as many of you as possible, preferably on your own home turf. If travel circumstances allow, I will certainly come if you invite me. Hasta pronto todos, nos vemos. See you soon in person, hopefully. Thank you very much, Dr. Anna Stavdal, for your informative speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for you to sit back and enjoy the upcoming three videos prepared especially for you on the upcoming Wonka conferences. On behalf of the conference organizing team and all our colleagues at the Wonka Secretariat and Meeting Minds experts, we once again thank you and wish you every success. After the past couple of years that we've shared together, I'm super excited to travel overseas and to welcome new friends down under again. There's nothing quite like sharing the places that you love with new friends. And so that's why I'm delighted to welcome you to Wonka 2023 in Sydney, Australia. Wonka officially began its long and illustrious history in Melbourne in 1972. Now, Australia warmly opens its arms and invites Wonka back to celebrate its 50th anniversary. Australia is a country of breathtaking beauty incredible experiences and a history of healing dating back more than 60,000 years. I know I'm slightly biased, but there really is no better place to celebrate 50 years of Wonka. So come down under for the trip of a lifetime and the conference of your career. I can't wait to see you in Sydney. Irish College of General Practitioners welcomes you to Ireland in June 2022. On behalf of the rural island and dispensing doctors of Ireland, Walter Goheron! The University of Limerick is delighted to invite you to join us for the Wonka World Rural Health Conference here on Ireland's beautiful west coast in 2022. Caeb Mila Faltiga Limnock, a hundred thousand Irish welcomes to Limerick our historic and culturally vibrant Riverside City, a gateway city to Ireland's Wild Atlantic Way, the longest defined coastal driving route in the world.
As you can see, we are surrounded by some fantastic conference facilities here on our Green Parkland campus, through which the mighty Shannon River flows with the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance and our renowned sports facilities. And of course, at this conference, we hope to have the best of crack with our on-site entertainments and our campus, which is a real village feel with cafes, restaurants, and beautiful walks. And we also hope you'll get to experience the hospitality of our world-renowned pub and music culture. Now there's a conference where ideas can take flight. With iconic tourist attractions, a wealth of activities, fine dining, farm to fork organic restaurants, a vibrant cafe culture, and pubs and clubs to rival any destination. Limerick has everything you would want in a conference destination for your delegates. We invite you to enjoy some of our world famous culture, sports and scenery on this beautiful green island steeped in millennia of history. Our land of saints and scholars. The pandemic has kept us apart, so let's come together to share ideas so that we can change attitudes, health, and ultimately the world. The Wonka World Rural Health Conference in Limerick in June 2022 is waiting to welcome you. Dear friends and colleagues, hello to you all. My name is Steve Mole, and I am the Honorary Treasurer of the Royal College of General Practitioners. And I have the privilege to chair the host organizing committee for the 27th Wonka Europe Conference in London in 2022. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this exciting event, which will be the first Wonka Conference to be held face to face since the pandemic. The conference will give us all a chance to meet, discuss and implement positive change. I invite you all to join us here in June 2022 in London, where history meets modern. Ancient seats of learning and state of the art technology sit side by side, where education, healthcare, culture and diversity are at our core. By welcoming you and hundreds of incredible family doctors and healthcare professionals from around the world to our amazing city, we really show that London is open to the very best scientific research, talent and creativity. We really do hope you will join us in 2022 London as a venue is lively, attractive, full of culture and excitement. And we learn better together, which is why we want you to join us next year. So see you in London in June 2022.